Yeah, I, I didn't, a lot of people have told me that. <laughs> it turned out well, let's put it that way. One of those, let's split second, it was actually at a, um, a pride worship service when I was in Windsor. Okay. I was sweating like a... Your, your life. It doesn't look like it. Oh, anyway. So, uh, yes, we do um, uh, face, not, not Facebook, but on Facebook, we do Facebook Live for the sermon. Uh, the camera's on me, so nobody else is shown. So you need to worry about that. It's just me. Um, but that way, people can uh, watch if they are not able to actually make it to church. Um, it is there available for people who couldn't make it and they can watch it later. And then it's recorded, so we upload it to our um, YouTube channel. And that's all about Barb. Yes, thank you, Barb. She, does, <laughs> she takes care of all that technical stuff. Thank you. So will you pray with me and for me? Holy One of Hope, may we recognize your presence all around us. May we rest in the hope you give us and the promises you have made to us. In all your names. Amen. Amen. So today is not just the first day of December, but it's the first day of the church year. Uh, we begin with Advent, which is that time before Christmas, as I mentioned, uh, when we uh, prepare for the arrival of Jesus. And it's marked in several ways. Um, one is the Advent wreath, which we lit the first candle of this, this morning. Uh, every week, one candle will be lit. Um, and the color purple is also a sign of Advent. It's the same color used for Lent, which is the season we spend preparing for Good Friday and Easter, um, because it's about preparations for the appearance of Jesus, for Jesus' acts. Uh, and Advent calendars. How many of you have had Advent calendars? Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly grew up with one. Uh, many, actually, my, I think my mom kept sending them to me until I was, I don't know, <laughs> maybe five years ago. <laughs> um, but they originally opened to reveal Bible verses telling the Christmas story, right? So usually the, this Annunciation, the appearance of Gabriel was around the first and, and it went on from the story until, East, until Christmas morning. Um, but today, of course, the Advent calendars are available with a wide range of things inside them. Uh, they've been very secularized, but they hold everything from uh, chocolate to toys. I've seen a whiskey um, advent calendar and uh, a fancy lotions. There's a, a fancy French lotion company that has an advent calendar and everything in between. There are pet advent calendars and, and so on. Socks. Yeah. <clears throat> Many ways of getting ready. Now each Sunday of Advent has a theme. Hope, that's today. Peace, joy, and love. Um, so today it's fitting that the theme is hope, uh, because hope is the foundation of our longing for Jesus' birth, and also as we observe World AIDS Day, we hold out hope for a cure, for better treatments, for a vaccine to prevent HIV AIDS. So as uh, Roxanne said, hope can be defined as a looking forward with an expectation of something better to come. Hope for a cure and or a vaccine and or better treatments for HIV AIDS. Hope for a better world with enough food and medical care and clean water and safe places to live for everyone with understanding and mutual acceptance and peace. Peace on earth. What does hope look like for you? I know I have hopes, things and events and situations that I hope to see or experience, not only for this Advent and Christmas, but in the coming months and years. Think of those hopes of yours for a moment and how they could be realized. What do you think hope looks like for people who are not like you? for people of another race, for underemployed people, for incarcerated people, for children, for immigrants, for undocumented people, <coughs> for the people of Syria or Afghanistan or Ghana, 
For indigenous peoples of the world, in the US and Canada, in Hawaii, in New Zealand, Brazil, Australia. What can we do to help their hopes to live, to make ours live? Because that's how hopes become reality, is that people take action. And sometimes that means money and financing, for example, for medical research, for agricultural research, and sometimes it means education, to create and encourage respect for the faith and traditions of others and to understand those faiths and traditions. Sometimes it just means empathy and connection for support for people who are incarcerated with letters, calls, cards, as we did at our um, card party a couple of weeks ago. It means listening to children and offering a welcome to newcomers. All these actions of reaching out across what seem to be barriers between us, that's hope. That is hope in action. Sometimes concrete and decisive actions are needed rather than the long-term ones of research and education. For example, telling your, your representatives that peace and reconciliation are important to us and affect how we vote. Or making those phone calls and sending those emails. It could also mean providing safe space for children and youth to be themselves. We know that a large proportion of homeless youth are LGBTQ+, thrown out of their family home or made to feel unwelcome. We all need hope, and we can offer hope to others. As Jesus came to earth to offer hope, we can be his hands and his feet and his face, bringing hope where it is scarce. In sharing our hope, in providing hope, we can renew our hope. As we begin the Advent season of preparation, hope, and offer hope to others. In all God's names, amen. amen. amen.